Seven seconds to go. Smart jumper. Good with four seconds to go. Syracuse can't. Doesn't call timeout. One second to go. Indiana wins the national championship. The sting of Keith Smart's shot to crush a national championship dream in New Orleans was still fresh for Syracuse University sports fans when the football team started practice in August of 1987. Coming off a 5-6 and six season in 1986, no one thought they were about to carve a historic path to New Orleans themselves. Well, that's not entirely true. Someone knew. Believe it or not, and, and I think that this dollar bill is still out there, um, my roommate Cooper Gardner wrote uh, Syracuse football 1987, 11-0, and this was in August? pretty sure that that dollar bill is still out there somewhere. Syracuse began the 1987 season with a 25-11 victory over Maryland at the Carrier Dome. With that win came another prediction. i never forget this. Chris Ingram said, oh my God, Jeff, we can win them all. And at that point, I believed it. Syracuse beat Rutgers in Miami of Ohio to move to 3-0. Syracuse's character shined through in a 35-21 win over the Hokies and in a 24-13 win over Missouri the next week. Syracuse was 5-0 and had a week off before the big one, Penn State, who had defeated Syracuse 16 straight times. We were 5-0 with a week off about to play a Penn State team that was hurting a bit. That wasn't the national championship team for me a year prior. They were hurting, they had some injuries. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, even an injured Penn State team would beat us in the past. But now we've, we've got a shot. The game was won, actually, before we even came out of the locker room. Because if you'd have been in our locker room before we actually walked out, it was the most electric thing. And I played football. I played four years you know, you know, uh, at Syracuse, and I played another 15 years professionally. And I've never been involved in a setting before, before a game that was as electric as that. Over 50,000 fans in the Carrier Dome didn't have to wait long for the fireworks to start. Don McPherson connected with Rob Moore on an 80-yard touchdown. And just 10 seconds into the game, Syracuse was up 7-0 on its hated rival. The Orangemen didn't let up until the scoreboard read Syracuse 48, Penn State 21. The Nittany Lions' 16-game winning streak was over. Joe Paterno walks into our locker room, and Mac gets everybody quieted down, and Joe Paterno addresses the entire team and says, that is one of the greatest performances I have seen in all my years as a head coach. You guys are an awesome team. Go out, finish this thing the right way, keep the national championship in the East. Good luck to you, and walked out. The Orangemen outscored their next four opponents 155 to 43. They were a top 10 team, and one game stood in the way of a perfect season, West Virginia. The West Virginia game was the worst football game I played my entire life. I threw 11 interceptions in 1987. I threw four of those interceptions against West Virginia. And people remember the last 90 seconds of that game, but the first 58 minutes and 30 seconds, I was horrible. Ah, the last 90 seconds of that game did happen. One of the greatest moments in Syracuse football history came out of it. After McPherson tossed a 17-yard touchdown to Pat Kelly with 15 seconds to go, Syracuse was down one point to West Virginia, 31-30. Would the Orange go for the tie and preserve a perfect season, or go for it and risk a loss and a shot at a national title? As if there were any doubt. Mack had called the timeout, and you know, what are we going to do? We're going to kick it, we stay undefeated, we go 10-0-1. Uh, or we, we go for it. We could be 10 and 1 or 11 and 0. And he's like, all the guys, all, all, they want to go. All the guys want to go. And Max said, it's their choice. And he, did, it, he, he allowed us to make that decision. Johnny McPherson, long count, option to the other side of the field. He pitches to Owen. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! Yeah! The Orangemen were certainly not denied. They had defeated West Virginia 32 31 and were 11 and 0 undefeated. It was on to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans on New Year's Day at the Superdome. Make no mistake, the Orange were on a business trip. A national championship was at stake. But hey, this is Bourbon Street. The fans and the team had a little fun before it was time for the big game. 
we, we enjoyed New Orleans. They, it's just weird. I think about it now. They give 20, 21 year old kids cash money and put us on Bourbon Street. I, you know, you know, see, looking at it as a 51 year old man now, I'm like, what were these people thinking? You know? <laughs> but we went to Bourbon Street and had a good time. And, but then it was time for the game. We turned that off and it was time to get to work. The Auburn defense was the best defense we saw by far that season. And they were bigger than us, they were faster than us, um, but they weren't better than us. Syracuse and Auburn battled into the fourth quarter, facing fourth and inches at the Auburn 22, and the game tied at 13. Coach McPherson faced a decision. We were in field goal range, and I'll never forget, never, looking over on the sidelines, there's Donnie Mack looking over to my left, and there comes Todd Philcox, who's our holder at the time, and Tim Vessling. He had a kick off a kicking tee for PATs at that point, came jogging on the field, and we as an offensive unit, no, get back, we can, we'll get this, we'll, let us go for it, let us go for it, we'll, we'll get this, we'll score a touchdown, we'll kick a field goal, run the clock out. There's a minute something left at that point. And Max like, no, Jesus, you get that, that. And they, we end up coming on, kicking the field goal. Trailing 16-13, Auburn drove up the field and was in position to win with four seconds to go. That's when Auburn coach Pat Dye did the unthinkable. He settled for a tie, sending place kicker Win Lyle on the field for a 30-yard field goal. The 1988 Sugar Bowl ended 16-16. So I'm coming across the field, we're all like kind of in shock, frankly. And all of a sudden start jogging, Mac gets into the middle of the field. Stop, stop, get back to the locker room. No, get your ass back to the locker room. Don't even shake hands. So we're like, okay. So we, we went in, it was, it was the, the tone of the locker room was like we, we lost. When I say Pat die, comes to your mind? Fear, scaredy cat. Um, um, what Coach Beck is like kissing your sister, a tie. When I think about when I think about Pat Dye and his decision, he was saving a lot of face in, in, in that football game because to lose to a Syracuse team uh, in the Sugar Bowl would not have would not have looked good for Pat Dye, and so um, that's what that I believe that's what that was saving a lot of face. Syracuse's dream of winning a national championship was cut off by Dye's cowardly call to tie the Sugar Bowl. But the legacy of the 1987 Syracuse football team, that will live on forever. It's hard to believe it's been 30 years. Uh, and when you consider the friendships that you, that you had, I mean, how many of us have, have those kinds of friendships that, that last that, that long? When I hear their stories, I, I'm really surprised we went undefeated. <laughs>